uh, it's about OLR and uh, our DocWorks product actually. But we would also discuss a bit uh, later on with you about um, yeah, markup of newspapers, to what level um, do you mark your newspapers. And I can talk a bit about what is best practice, what did we face in our projects that we did, and uh, the markup that we cover with our DocWorks te technology. So I will you uh, what we will do in this uh, half an hour here. So I will talk a bit about uh, layout and structural elements of newspapers, market policy, best practice, but also the market policy we are going to use in the European newspaper project here. Um, and then I will do a short demo of our DocWorks technology just to show you uh, possible interaction, especially what content providers can do regarding doing the quality assurance on the data we uh, process and the output we create. Um, and then Günther, Günther Rüberger will talk a bit about um, uh, yeah, in Word Package 5, such a metadata, because we are doing a white paper in that project here, so there, there will be a white paper about uh, markup uh, of newspapers, so it should be like a kind of standard uh, recommendation to the common unity, so that's a goal to come up with a white paper at the end. And uh, so the current status, Gunter will uh, talk a bit about this. And then we would at the end have, let's say, about uh, 20 minutes, 15 minutes for discussion. Because we would like to hear from you what are you doing regarding markup of newspapers? Are you just going to page level? Are you markup for text blocks, for illustrations? Are you going to article level? So we discuss this. What is your practice? Uh, what are you facing maybe your problems in, in your projects? So layout and structural elements. Um, yeah, typically basic classification of blocks uh, are regular text blocks, then illustrations, uh, but as well as advertisements. So these are the typical ones uh, that are usually tagged. Um, <laughs> And then the next step would be to have the classification of text blocks as, for instance, headlines. Yeah, regular text blocks again, but captions of illustrations or tables. Uh, but also page numbers, to, to tag the page numbers and then by OCR with the page numbers that bring the pages into the right sequence. Um, and then at the end, grouping of blocks that has been recognized and classified, grouping those blocks to articles. So this would be then the final steps, the final step uh, in that process. And uh, what's also is covered, and I mentioned it before in my presentation, is that we also take care of the article continuation. So because in the article itself, starting on page one, there is a continuation link, maybe saying article is continued on page seven or just continued on page seven. So there are specific different terms that uh, may, uh, will make up a continuation link. And then there might be a continuation headline on page 7, a special headline for the con continued article. So we have to take care also of this type of element and as I said before, then really grouping both parts together to one article. So yeah, what's the best practice? I mean, uh, with our technology and with our team, CCS, we did a lot of projects, digitalization <coughs> projects. And the prominent one was the, for the Dutch National Library, where we had actually digitized 9 million newspaper pages and structured them to article level. Um, so, but here, what I put here is, um, let's say, best practice by looking at different projects, but say, well, this is typically, let's say, for a mass digitization project where people would like to have at least a certain level of markup. So, regarding the zone classification, we have headline, sub-headline, text block. Um, then, as I mentioned before, continuation link and the continuation headline, uh, running titles, um, illustration, table, and those captions um, belonging to either illustration or table advertisements, uh, then publisher statements in the newspapers, family notice, so it might be birth notice, marriage, uh, or death notice, um, and page numbers. Uh, page numbers are a very important uh, thing to get the right page sequence. 
Um, the things I put in bold here, this would be really, let's say, the typical minimum requirements, yeah? So that people just tag headline, text block, uh, maybe continuation link, continuation headline, because it's important to have the whole article, yeah? So I would say it's still a minimum requirement and illustration and caption to the illustration. So that would be a minimum requirement uh, that we got from uh, institutions who would like to digitize their newspapers. Yeah, and then we have the article segmentation, grouping, so grouping of individual zones into articles and also uh, take care of the article continuation in that process. But we only do it on pages of the same issue, so we don't go across that border that we say, okay, there might be an article continued in another issue of a newspaper, so we just stop at the issue level by continuing articles. <coughs> Okay, so what are we going to um, do regarding the markup policy in the European uh, Newspapers Project? So, regarding zone classification, we will recognize and classify headline, text block, continuation link, continuation headline, running titles, illustration table and captions, uh, advertisement and page number. And then we, again, we do the article segmentation and grouping, and what we also do in this project is we do a page classification. So we will have four classes, title page, um, so the title page of, of, of an issue, content page, a page that consists of content, so text only. Um, and illustration page would be at least a page where there is at least one illustration on the page, so then we will classify it as an illustration page. And the advertisement page is where there are only adverts only. Yeah, so if there is a page where there is a little advertisement, it would be a content page. That's text based and, uh, yeah. So now I will show you a the DocWorks system.
create, and on the left we build the logical sequence. So often a <coughs> page number on a newspaper, but looking at the sequence with a rule system, you can also add those missing page numbers, let's say. So that's why we automatically on the left hand here in the left column come up with the right logical page sequence. And this will be recorded in the Mets Airtor package. But this is more or less the physical structure linking the images to the page numbers uh, and so on. But if we open here uh, the logical structure, the content, you see here we have one issue of uh, newspaper title is Le Cour de Paris. We have the issue date and here an issue number. So these are the basic metadata. Mainly we get automatically by the deliveries of the content partners, we get newspaper title and issue date. If I open the issue here, uh, we have a title section uh, on the title page here, but more interesting is if we open the content here, then you see on this level here listed are the different articles. So if I click on an article, you just see what has been grouped to that article. So we see the headline, in this case might be on the subject line, and then uh, we have the regular, uh, the, the regular blocks here. So here we, we have an article uh, which includes um, an illustration or a picture. So we open this to drill it really down. We have uh, the heading um, so of that article. But if we go to the content of the article itself, we are now at the lowest logical entity, which is a paragraph. Yeah, this is the lowest logical entity that we describe here. Um, but again, a paragraph might be consist of several text blocks, especially um, at the end of a column when a uh, paragraph is continued on the next column on, on the top. Then we uh, put those physical text blocks together to one paragraph. That's a logical entity. Yeah, so what, um, I mean, you can either work in that tree here, yeah, so you can by drag and drop move up things. Uh, correct sequence of text blocks, all these kind of things. Um, <coughs> I drag and drop or change the classification, change the, even the, the metadata here. We have another metadata dialog um, in the software where you can at every logical level uh, change or even add uh, metadata. But uh, what I want to show here is um, it's also possible to just focus on certain things, yeah, because it might be interesting just to correct the headlines yeah, and then to have a really fast process. So I can click here on headlines and then start here and change on the right in the window from the image mode to the, to the text mode. So we will have a text view here and now I just really can jump to the list and use the text editor here and then have the image, the synchronized word can correct the text and relatively fast I do that. I can also do it by uh, captions or other classified zone types which appear in the list here. So it's a very convenient, fast process to correct things. So and all of this can be used uh, by the content providers either to check or even yeah, correct things. Um, and I just heard from one or two partners they would like to really have the best quality possible so they will even spend more time than uh, which is budgeted in, in the project or that they get money for. So they might do more if they are really keen on having the best quality output and as less failure as possible in text headlines. Yeah, so this is a short overview on Docker's product and what can be done regarding checking the output and correcting output regarding classification of blocks, uh, structure metadata can be changed here. So then I would like to hand over to Günther who would uh, talk about the white paper that he
So um, I think it's just me uh, between talks and lunch. No? Yes. Something else? Someone else later on coming as well? Just <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I have the full freedom. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm very quickly um, this understand this slide mainly as an announcement. Um, we have in the work package five uh, we deal with the metadata for digitized newspapers, and we will come up with an, uh, what we have called. Uh, European newspaper maps alto profile M map. Um, we use a, mm, a, a version without uh, uh, structural metadata already in the project for delivering files to uh, European, and uh, we will make a public release uh, during this year in October. Um, it's yeah, it's at least uh, uh, a format built feedback of many libraries and within the project and I think could be interesting for some of you as well. But my actual uh, addition to uh, what uh, Klaus uh, presented you is on structural metadata and I have to say that uh, um, since many years I'm a bit uh, involved in that kind of work and um, if we look at uh, a newspaper, we see a lot of what we call structural metadata. We already saw the title section, the headline, advertisements, illustration, caption line, the running title, page numbers, but you can think on much more on, uh, on short articles put together to a column, on um, family notices, on job announcements, on uh, uh, Whatever. So um, we have also text types, which are extremely interesting, I think, from the user point of view. Um, you have to know that the, a search result is within a short news or within a book review or a theater review or whatever, a weather forecast, a novel, a poem. Um, EG novels were published uh, in many newspapers over um, many issues, especially in the 19th century, it was a very usual to publish novels. Uh, so this, that makes a big difference. And actually, I think we have uh, a TEI and, and some other um, instruments to classify these uh, elements, but uh, commonly accepted uh, vocabulary or data dictionary is, to my best knowledge, not available. Everyone is more or less inventing the wheel for you. Um, if they do it with CCS, they will get some support probably from the many projects and the experiences they have. But um, as a matter of fact, uh, there, is, um, there is no kind of standard available. And um, discovering this or uh, coming to my uh, head, uh, this observation, um, I, I thought it would be a good idea to extend a little bit the work that we are doing in this project and to uh, try to set up uh, what we call the data dictionary. And I have to say that um, 10 years ago we already were rather successful with such an effort. Um, it was in 2003, I think, 2002, that we uh, introduced the ALTO format, Analyzed Layout and Text Object within the Metadata Engine project. And thanks to the uh, really great engagement of uh, especially Klaus, um, and certainly also some other libraries who are dealing with that, uh, ALTO is not a real standard, but it is a format hosted by the Library of Congress and can be seen as one of the de facto standards. So mm, I could imagine that even in that case, um, since the need is there, um, it could be a good effort to set up such a data dictionary and maybe uh, to make it 
uh, that it becomes successful. Okay, so what we need from my point of view is that we need to have a comprehensive list of elements and text types. We need clear definitions. Uh, we can take many of them uh, from ICTP, 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 from uh, the newspaper organization from London. They have similar lists for modern newspapers. Uh, we can take something from TEI, something maybe from Mark, whatever. But uh, we need some definitions. We also need criteria for the definitions, which is important. Um, because definition is always an arbitrary act. You can, what you define is arbitrary, yeah? But it makes uh, that it is uh, reliable, that it is uh, concise, that it is uh, distinct. You need uh, good criteria. Uh, we need to include a lot of examples, but uh, this project gives us the chance to have examples for these structural elements from Estonia to uh, uh, Serbia. Yeah, so uh, we will find uh, any examples. Um, yeah, clearly to make an open dictionary so that people can contribute firstly within the project, uh, maybe afterwards also uh, outside the project or surely outside the is a welcome as well. Um, and I think it makes sense to classify structural elements according to their intention. This would be my approach, um, but I will say some words about this uh, later on. So, once again, why do we need these uh, guidelines, this data dictionary? If you are um, talking to your service providers or to your team, if your team is actually tagging and mark up the, the newspaper. Uh, you need a vocabulary, and the better the vocabulary is defined, the easier it is will be for you. Uh, you can also use it, certainly, structural metadata within search services and browsing services. Um, uh, you can think of faceted search. Uh, there are some newspaper applications where this is already uh, in place. Uh, select searches within advertisements or whatever. And also I think cloud-based services uh, will benefit from such a list of uh, structural metadata because in many, many cases people will be able to classify and tag uh, articles according to uh, the defined uh, criteria. Okay, some considerations to take home or to uh, discuss here, because of the, we have some time to for discussion. Um, I think we can understand text as an intention towards the reader, or uh, something a text wants to do something with the reader. I mean, you can understand text in different ways, that's clear, but uh, this would be one approach. What does text, in that case, the text within a newspaper with us. And uh, the text can inform us, can entertain us, can convince, try to convince us, uh, can try to activate us, or supports us in navigating through the newspaper. So you already can imagine in which direction I'm thinking. And uh, so the question is, what are the main interactions in historical newspapers? What, what, what does the text want us to do? One question. The other question is, certainly, does the layout define the interaction or the semantic content or a combination of both? Uh, if we think of the intention of the text, clearly the semantic of the text plays an important role. But as we all know, the layout is also um, very important. Must it be mixed up? Or at least we should see that these are two sides of the uh, layout. Then, um, yeah, uh, family notices, obituaries, crossword puzzles, poems, novels, are they articles? Is the concept that a newspaper consists of articles, 
the right concept or are they simple items, intellectual items? Yeah. So maybe something we can we can think on. Um, is the headline of an article a piece of information or does it support the user in navigating through the newspaper? Why is the headline of a newspaper usually bold and thick? Is it for semantics or is it for, for, yeah, for navigation to give the eye of the user a kind of uh, Um, yeah, I imagine a cloud-based service where users can apply text types from a list. Would this be useful? Whatever. And um, so, if you want to contribute, um, those who already were involved in structural tagging and markup uh, had to uh, set up a markup policy. Um, we are happy to receive uh, your lists, your examples. Um, those who are within the project, please uh, have a look to the updated paper. I already sent uh, this paper uh, out uh, some months ago, but uh, I've updated it now and uh, we'll be happy uh, for, your, uh, for your feedback and certainly we are, we are very open to your discussion. Yeah, so um, this, this was my contribution. I'm nearly in time. <laughs>